Hello, welcome back. How are you doing today? I hope things are going well for you. We just finished lessons on adding and subtracting fractions, and today we're going to work on reciprocals. Reciprocals will be important to us when we start dividing fractions, and they're also commonly found in many circuit formulas. So let's see what sorts of things we can do today. Grab your guided student notes, and let's get started. I'm going to start by scrolling up just a little bit. Okay, the reciprocal of a number is 1 divided by that number. It's pretty straightforward. If your value is 8, the reciprocal is 1 eighth. If your value is negative 7, the reciprocal is negative 1 7. So the sign of the reciprocal doesn't change at all. If your value is 1, what do you think the reciprocal is? Well, going by the definition, it's 1 over 1, which we know has a value of 1. What about the reciprocal of 0? Think about that one for a second. 1 over 0 is undefined, so 0 doesn't have a reciprocal at all. We might want to make a note about that one. Division by 0 is undefined. And so what that means is that 0 has no reciprocal. I have no idea what that flash just was. Let's hope it doesn't happen again. Um, hopefully you're back in line with where I am and I need to scroll back up again. Okay, so that's where we were. If you're trying to find the reciprocal of a fraction, that's a little bit different because we don't want 1 divided by a fraction. That would just have too many fraction bars in it. And so as it turns out, what we do is interchange the numerator and the denominator. In ordinary language, what that means is that we are going to flip the fraction upside down. So let's try a few more examples. I'm going to scroll up a little bit so you can see my table. And let's say we have a fraction like 7 ninths. We're just going to take this fraction and flip it upside down. 9 was the denominator, now 9 is the numerator. And the 7 goes on the bottom. So the reciprocal of 7 ninths is 9 sevenths. The same thing happens if we have a negative fraction, maybe negative 2 fifths. Its reciprocal is negative 5 halves. We just flip the fraction upside down the sign doesn't change at all. And we'll talk about why this works once we start dividing fractions in a couple of lessons. Let's try a couple more. What if we were looking at negative 38 in the numerator and 153 in the denominator? You should be able to write the reciprocal. You should also be able to write the reciprocal of 2700. Give it a try. All right, the reciprocal of negative 38 150 thirds is negative 153 over 38. And 2700, that's like the ones we just did a second ago, its reciprocal is 1 over 2700. 
because of course we think of 2700 as being a whole number with a denominator of 1. All right, so when might you see some reciprocals? To begin with, when we're talking about resistances and circuits. If the resistances are connected in series, then the total resistance is exactly what you think it is. We think of total as adding, and that's what we would do. But if your resistances are, let's flip over to the next page, connected in parallel, things are a little different. So when resistances are connected in parallel, we have a nice long description of the formula. The reciprocal of the total resistance. Hmm. Okay, the reciprocal of the total resistance. We should probably get some notation happening. Let's call R with a subscript of T the total resistance. leave some space up here for some more notation, but for right now, let's look at this yellow stuff. We have the reciprocal of the total resistance. And of course, reciprocal means to just take one over whatever that number has to be. Okay, the reciprocal of the total resistance. The next thing we have is this is, which is blue. And of course, is mathematically means equals. So let's color code that a little bit. Okay, the reciprocal of the total resistance is the sum. Let's do that in green, the sum. And sum means that we need to add things. All right, well in this pot time, as we just get started, we're gonna look at two resistances connected in parallel. So let's call R sub one the first resistance And let's call R sub 2 the second resistance. So we are looking at the sum, that's our green stuff, of the reciprocals of the individual resistances. So not the resistances themselves, but their reciprocals. 1 over R sub 1 and 1 over r sub 2. So let's get a different color here. The sum of the reciprocals of the individual resistances. And that would be this one and this one. All right. If we had three resistances connected in parallel, it would look exactly the same, except that the sum would have three pieces. So we would have 1 over R sub t is equal to 1 over R sub 1 added to the reciprocal of the second resistance added to the reciprocal of the third resistance. And of course, if you had a lot of resistances, we'd just keep going like that. The reciprocal of the total resistance, we would add the reciprocal of the first one, and the reciprocal of the second one, and then we would keep on going until we were adding the reciprocal of the last one. And we'd call that R sub n, so that this general number, however that might be, 3, 4, 5, 7, we just call that n. And so we keep adding that way. And you already know that when we're adding fractions, we need to have a common denominator. So we can't just add things up um, from left to right with numerators and then denominators. We have to do a little extra work. So let's give it a try. Let's flip the page and see what happens. Okay, so here we have two resistances, 150 ohms and 200 ohms connected in parallel. We'd like to know the total resistance of the circuit. The parallel resistances means that we have to use that formula involving reciprocals. So let's just start and fill in everything that we know. We know that the total resistance 
is going to be the, sorry, the reciprocal of the total resistance is going to be the sum of the reciprocal of the first resistance plus the reciprocal of the second resistance. And so there we are. And the first thing, of course, that we need is a common denominator. And let's choose the least one because it'll make things a whole lot nicer. This one we can probably figure out a least common denominator just by thinking about it. Let's start with the largest denominator and just think about multiples. So 150 doesn't divide evenly into 200. Let's try 200 times 2. That's 400. 150 goes into 400? No. What about 600? Does 150 go into 600? And it does. And of course, you could check this with your calculator also. So our least common denominator is going to be 600. So we need to do a little bit of side work. 1 over 150. We would need to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 4 so that the denominator is 600. But this is nice because I had a 1 in the numerator. It's not like the multiplication is going to become difficult. The other one was 1 over 200. And I can multiply that by 3 over 3 so that now I have 3 over whoops, 600. OK, so we'll just rewrite our equation here. 1 over r sub t is equal to 4 six hundredths plus 3 six hundredths. That's easy enough. We now have common denominators, so we can just go ahead, add the numerators together, and keep the same denominator. And you'd think that we were done, but we are not, because we need to find what r sub t is, not its reciprocal. So what we're going to do is take the reciprocal of both sides of the equation. You'll remember that we learned about adding the same amount to both sides, dividing both sides by the same amount. You can do whatever you want to both sides of the equation just about, and everything still works out nicely. Both sides still stay equal. So we're going to flip this left-hand side upside down, which gives us r sub t over 1. And we'll flip the right-hand side upside down, taking another reciprocal, and end up with 600 over 7. Now, of course, r sub t over 1 is just r sub t. And if we take our calculator now, we can find out what 600 divided by 7 is. Because people would probably like this in a particular number of ohms. So let's round to the nearest tenth and say that this is actually approximately, so we'll give our little squigglies there, 85.7 ohms. Let's we'll slide down a little bit. Oh, there we go for the answer. The total resistance is about 85.7 ohms. Now I know right about now you're wondering why we didn't just do the division on the calculator and work with decimals. And there's a reason why we do this. Because fractions are exact. All right, one third takes the whole cuts it into three pieces, and we get one of them. If you do one divided by three on a calculator, you have that 0.333333 repeating thing, and then you have to round, and you lose some of your values. And it doesn't feel like that's really important a lot of times. But every time you lose digits, you end up incorporating error into your calculations. And the thing about reciprocals is that they are very sensitive to error. So what I want to do is show you what would have happened if we had tried to do this with the decimals. And then we're going to cross it out because we don't want to do it this way. All right, so let's try again. Let's say we started our problem again with the reciprocal of the total resistance being, whoops, that's not right. Let me fix that. There we go. The sum of 1 over 150 plus 1 over 200. And remember, I'm just showing you a bad way to do this. Let's suppose that we were using our calculator for this, and we asked the calculator what 1 divided by 150 was. 
and we see that this goes on and on forever, and so we have this urge to round. And so let's say that we rounded to the nearest thousandth, really a thousandth, that's quite tiny, and we called it 0 0.007. And then we'll do the same thing with 1 divided by 200. which comes out to be nice, no rounding at all. How convenient is that? So we only rounded in one tiny little spot. And when we add these together, we get 0 0.012, and then we take the reciprocal of both sides, which would be 1 over 0 0.012. We feel like we're doing great things here. And watch what happens. 83, 83.3 repeating. And you'll see that these answers here are not really all that close. We couldn't even round one to get the other. So working with the decimals is a bad idea, especially when you have large resistances. As a matter of fact, the larger the resistances are, the more sensitive the reciprocals are to tiny little rounding errors. So moral of the story, use the fractions and then round at the very end. We'll even put this here, save rounding until the very end. And that keeps error out of your calculations. There, we'll even highlight it because it's important. Okay, let's flip the page and try another. Now we have three resistances connected in parallel. So the formula is pretty similar. The process is very similar. We just have three fractions instead of two. It's not a big deal. Let's get our formula happening here. We have one over the total resistance is equal to the sum of all these reciprocals. So we need one over eight added to one over 10 added to one over six. And of course, the first thing we need to do is figure out what sort of least common denominator we need. Um, yeah, I'm thinking about multiples of 10 in my head, and I'm not coming up with any right off the bat that are divisible by 6 and 8 at the same time. So let's try a little prime factorization. If we had 8, we would know that that's 2 times 2 times 2. And now we want to look at 10 because 10 has got to be part of this common denominator also. 10 is 2 times 5. There's already a 2 here, but I don't have a 5. Let's stick one in there. And 6 is 2 times 3. I already have a 2, but I don't have a 3. So if I multiply all of these together, I have 2 times 2 times 5, oh, sorry, 2 times 2 times 2 times 5, and then times 3. And that gives me 120. And I know that 8 goes into 120 because I can see the 8 in the factorization. I know that 10 goes into 120. And I also know that 6 goes in there. So what we need to do is take the 8th, the 10th, and the 6th, and rewrite them with denominators of 120. And you can do that. Pause the recording, give it a try, and come back when you are ready. All right, let's see how things went. 8 times 15. So I need 15 in the numerator and 15 in the denominator will give us 120. So we have 15 one 120ths. If we wanted to convert 1 tenth to 120ths, we would need to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 12. So that would give us 12 120ths. And if we wanted to multiply 1 sixth by 20 over 20, we would get a denominator of 120. As a matter of fact, we would have 20 120ths. And now we're ready to add. So 1 over the reciprocal of the total resistance is equal to 15 120ths plus 12. 120ths plus 20. 
120s. And we can add those all up. Not a problem. That would be 47 120ths. And you'll remember from the last time, we can't stop here. We need to take the reciprocal. of both sides of the equation. So that R sub T, that's our total resistance, right? The reciprocal makes it look like it's over one, is equal to 120 40 sevenths. And now we are just about set. R sub T over one, that's just R sub T. And 120, We'll use our calculator and round if we like. So let's say we'll take this uh, to the nearest hundredth and give 2.55. And of course, the units there are ohms. So this is about 2.55 ohms. And we remembered to only do the rounding at the very end of the problem. So as we slide down to the end of the page, we're going to stop talking about resistance for a minute and talk about capacitors. And the nice thing about capacitors is that they have a very similar relationship to what happens with resistors, except the same type of relationship holds for capacitors that are connected in series. And with resistors, it happened when they were connected in parallel. But we've seen this sentence before. The reciprocal of the total capacitance is the sum of the reciprocals of the individual capacitances. So it won't surprise you at all if we talk about the reciprocal of the total capacitance as 1 over C with a subscript of T. And then we just start adding reciprocals. The first capacitance in a reciprocal plus the reciprocal of the second capacitance plus the reciprocal of the third capacitance and we keep on going until we've gotten them all. And we add up all of the reciprocals just like that. Okay, so let's flip to the very last page and do our last example. Here we have two capacitors connected in series. So we know that this formula applies. The first capacitor has a capacitance of 50 microfarads. So we've got 1 over 50 for our first fraction. The second one has a capacitance of 30 microfarads. 1 over 30 for our second fraction. Save some space over here for our side work because of course we're going to need a common denominator. But this is the place where you should pause the recording and try this on your own and then come back when you're ready to compare your solutions with mine. Okay, let's see how you did. I used 150 as my least common denominator. 30 goes into there and so does 50, and I can see that pretty easily. So if I had 1 50th and I multiplied by 3 over 3, I would then have 3 150 ths If I had 1 30th and I multiplied by 5 over 5, then I would have 5 150 ths so in my work, I still have the reciprocal of the total capacitance on the left-hand side, but the right-hand side looks like 3 150ths plus 5 150ths, which of course gives me a sum of 8 150ths. You didn't stop here. You remembered to take the reciprocal. of both sides. So I know that C sub T, if you like, C sub T over 1, is 150 divided by 8. This is the place where we can round. And we don't actually even need that. Look at that. came out nice this time. So that the total capacitance
is 18.75. Don't forget your units. And this time they are microfarads. And that's pretty much it for today. Go give your homework a shot and we'll be talking. Take care. Bye-bye.